Welcome everyone. Today we are going to speak about following youth. So which social problems are most relevant for to your youth? Why I did this presentation, why I wanted to prepare this presentation in this subject? Hmm. This is because we, I would like to present you the tool, which is local diagnosis, which is for me the best tool to really step out of my shoes for, you know, to, to, till the end, because we are like, okay, uh, I just feel that we are all in this environment of NGOs, of people who are passionate, don't really maybe make really really a good money out of, out of their work, but they are driven by passion, by heart, by empathy. So we are really maybe you are not maybe you are not uh, if you are not um, agreeing with me, just say it in the chat. Uh, but we are really driven by this feeling. We know things. We know everything. Like we know our local community. We know their needs. So this is the tool which is contradicting this statement, this good feeling of ourselves. That's why I would like to present you, to show you what the local diagnosis is for, uh, what are the benefits of using it, how to proceed with it. Um, we will be, as you see, we will be working in small groups. And I hope that you will leave this workshop with some results for concrete locality. I say town, but by town, I mean your place where you are working and where, where you are active. Okay, let me check how can I see also you on the chat, not only the presentation, but maybe, Noemi, if I can ask you, if there are some questions on the chat, can you just interrupt me and come then? Is this fine work? Is it working for you? Yes, absolutely. I usually I tend to interrupt all the session leaders and ask um, difficult questions. So be sure I will be here for you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so um, I was a um, to introduce myself. I was a part a member of organization called School for Leaders, and its founder was Professor Zbigniew Pelczyński. He is economist, pilot politologist uh, who was uh, studying and having lectures at Oxford. Now he's retired, um, but he founded this, um, this leadership movement in Poland, I would say. And he, had, he has this saying that for an organization to really fulfill its goals means really that the organization is no longer needed. So I just would like to refer to this um, to this behavior of ours, that sometimes we, I can talk from my personal point of view, sometimes I forget that actually what I'm doing has the aim that I won't be needed anymore. I mean, I would like to help resolving some problems and I want these problems to be resolved. And that's how the, uh, that's how the local diagnosis is helping us with, with diagnosing the problems and, and the needs of our closest environments. And that's how we can work also with our youth. I mean, that's how we can discover what the youth we are working for and we are working with really needs, not only what we imagine they need. So, uh, just to small introduction, I am a train. Sorry, I'm a trainer, and I had this opportunity to work with youth also in different departments. I would say. Uh, both as like both internationally and in Poland, uh, both in um, in circumstances of you know as as on the uh, on the bottom in circumstances in circumstances of a training room and outdoor as you see on the left. So from this, I would like to from my introduction, I would like to ask you all to say a little about yourself and please, if you could, 
I know it's, I, I dare to ask you, it's three in the afternoon and you probably are after lunch and your energy maybe is low, but it would be really nice if you could come, share your audio and video and say four things. One, who are you by name and from which country or, or locality? Is it like small town, big town, a village? Uh, what you like, one sentence about yourself. Uh, whom do you work with? What kind of youth you are working with? What is their age? What are their main problems, interests? Please briefly, one sentence, okay? And one sentence in the end, which is saying, just finish the sentence, I believe our youth I work for is or likes something. So please, just four sentences, be ready, apply to share audio and video, and Naomi will be able to, um, to let all of you in. I am starting to have a role model. My name is Hania. I live in very far east of Poland. I like dogs. I work with a youth who is interested in outdoor tourism and I believe this youth is very active and doesn't like to work in the office. That's for me. I'm waiting for your... Martella, am yeah, I right? Martella. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you are from Italy, yeah, it's Marcella. But yeah, I am from Argentina, I am Marcella, but I live in Berlin. Uh, I work in an organization who works with uh, Latin American migrant people, uh, families, uh, but uh, mostly kids. And uh, the last uh, sentence is, I believe that I the, the... They... Sorry? I believe they, they, the people you are working with, they are or they like something. Uh, I believe the people who I who I work in uh, with are it uh, powerful and they will change the world for good. I think. Thank you so much. Is somebody there else? Nusha and Uska from Slovenia. We work with Roma children. They all come from socially endangered families. We have all age groups. Titus, nice Hello. to meet you. Hey. My name is Titus. Um, I am from Romania, Arad. And uh, I work with young people, volunteers. Uh, I forgot, I like um, art, music, and nature. And um, I use non-formal education, um, working with volunteers here in Romania. Uh, some issues that we tackle are, um, for example, sports, to do more sports, a more uh, healthy lifestyle, also including sports for people with disabilities, young people with disabilities, and also uh, social enterprise. That's a few of the problems we tackle along. And do you believe one sentence about people with whom you work? What is your belief on them? How, what they are like, what do, they, what do they like? I believe uh, in the long run, they will be the change that we need. They are open-minded youngsters that just need a little bit of guidance. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Hello, Dorota, nice to see your drawings. Who else is there maybe to share with us their beliefs on people who whom they work with, who you work with. Okay, so local diagnosis. This is the tool which I wanted to show you hmm. and tell you what is it for. So maybe I guess that maybe some of you have some sociological background or at least each of us at least once in our lifetime had answered some survey, right? So local diagnosis is a research, but hmm, it's made by us. I mean, 
it's a tool for our actions and for our planning of actions. So formal definition, let's say, uh, local diagnosis is to gather, to complement and to deepen our knowledge about our environment, to verify our own opinions. So if some of you said that, for example, I believe that my like people with with whom I work are open minded or as I said, I believe that people with whom I work don't really like to sit in the office and work in the office. All these opinions can be questioned and it's really valuable to have this tool used in long term work. So proceeding with local diagnosis by proceeding with local diagnosis, we try to efficiently describe the, ter the territory we deal with, uh, point out social needs in this territory. In, by territory, I mean if you if you if you are in local community, like in local town, it says town, and I will use this verb, like I will use this word as territory. So if, for example, your territory of your actions of your organization is an island, let's be an island. If it's, I don't know, big, like uh, big, big town, like capital city, for example, let's have it or capital city or the district you are working in. So, but, uh, so you need to really clarify for yourself and for sake of this workshop, your town, your territory. So how how big is it? I suggest if you have to choose between capital city and district, choose district. If you have to choose between district and really, really small, you know, tiny part of this district, choose the smaller one because the smaller one mm, is better to have like more, more quality survey, I would say. So the function of local diagnosis is still to point out social needs in this territory, in your town, to point out problems to solve and to show the potential fields. I mean, to show where there is a potential, where you don't need to push a lot, just a little in order to get great results. And uh, it's not everything. By um, I encourage you to play, to deal with local diagnose, because it's an action which is a teamwork and which also has consequent, like positive consequences in your environment. So, thanks to this, you can omit mistakes in your actions. You can match solutions to needs, see the obstacles save your time and energy, very valuable resources. You can get inspired and last but not least, you can easier apply for funds. Let me uh, just to say you that I am not really watching chat very systematically. So if there is any question, please jo jump and knock. Thank you. Sure. On the chat, so people, uh, it seems to me that uh, people prefer to share um, information about themselves on the chat so I can right. read it aloud. So Fonti, he said that he's from Artifactory in the west coast of Greece and he's an artist photographer. He also works with um, young people. Um, uh, yes, at the periphery of Greece. I'm not going to read the whole, you know, paragraph because it will be too, ma too much. Uh, yeah, and, and the young people, they are like 15, 20. So, Fonti, thank you for, for uh, sharing this. Uh, I see also information from Deborah. She's from the south of Italy. Our project manager, Francesca, is also from the south, south Italy. Just <laughs> <laughs> and Deborah says that she loves food and uh, young people. Uh, and I work with deprived from working opportunities and innovation Thank you in the that. area of politics. So it's perfect. And uh, Nusha uh, and 
Urszka from Slovenia. Uh, they say that we work with Roma children. They all come from socially uh, endangered families. We have all age groups. Zoran uh, likes jazz. Uh, he's a producer, <laughs> so and he uh, wants to work with young uh, uh, people interested in digital content creation. So just uh, you know, you have we have a picture of our. <laughs> I very uh, like this audience. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. So to um, to continue, local diagnosis is also have also like internal benefits for your organization. It can strengthen your team because it's a, a teamwork. It can build a common knowledge for the organization about the surroundings. It can, it can very important, build credibility in the eyes of your partners. So if you are a local NGO and you have municipality to deal with, schools, scout groups, parents of your youth, whoever who needs to you know acknowledge you as serious partner the local diagnosis will will really help you with this it can also uh, help you like with animation i mean with engaging people around you because you can engage youth also to diagnosis itself they are on not only the subject but they can be uh, they, they are not only the object, they can be subject of, of diagnosis. They can be your investigators. Uh, it's good to public relations within local community. So everybody will know that you are like seriously interested in what's going on in the community. Uh, and despite the, you know, despite our hmm, associations with surveys and with, with big, uh, technological and sociological elements uh, to evaluate it's like it's not true even small research can bring really valuable discoveries for you especially on your like on your level in, in your surroundings and of course that's what i started with it can objectify your knowledge your beliefs so after 10 years of working with scouts for example i feel yeah i know about people aged 15 to 18 everything about girls in this age totally everything i would like to question myself also and i wish you to so there are four very important like commandments of um, taking the social the local diagnosis uh, on your agenda never do it alone it's too much too complicated and it's not fun and you know everything what we do in the end should be a little fun at least so never do it alone always put the team together you need different competences you need different times of the day when somebody is free you will need your team secondly inquisitiveness this is very horrible and long word what i meant is never be satisfied with the answer so ask and ask and ask and dig in dig in never 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 stop asking you know if you go to somebody and ask how are you feeling in in front of this shop for example because it's important for you because this is the shop where your youth is coming very often then if somebody is answering you you go over and over what is there why is there why are you feeling here how are you feeling and so on the commandment number three do not bore people use use different tools and these tools i will show you in half an hour i believe and the fourth one you need presentation i mean uh, local diagnosis of course it's for you and for your needs and for your purposes but there is you, you need a final you need a closure you need a final results and by presenting it you truly have this project finished okay so i will go through the structure i promise you that we will start working in a groups in i believe 10 minutes maximum 
uh, and it will be mainly on the stage number one. So start, first meeting of a team and choice of a subject for a diagnosis. Then we will move to toolkit. So I will show you some tools, how to diagnose. And uh, in the end, I will also speak a little about the conclusions, what did you discover, how to build these conclusions, and about the presentation part. So how to show your diagnosis, your results. Uh, okay, we are in start. We are in first meeting of a team and choice of subject. So, when you gather your team, I mean, who is in the team? It must be, oh, pardon. It must be uh, you, <laughs> for sure. And um, how many colleagues you have in your organization? But maybe if you are working with, like, with people, for example, uh, immigrants or youngster foster youth or youngsters from your local school, all of them can also be in your team. In your team can be also somebody who is from out of your organization, but who is interested, like a friend or a formal supporter. Mm. I'm just giving you the hints how to organize the process and in the meantime we will check a few things in the groups. So in order to for you to remember how to keep your team motivated is of course that uh, the time must be realistically planned. Uh, I do not recommend anybody to to proceed with local diagnosis more than half a year because it can kill somebody. It should be month to four, five maximum. And remember that you need the closure. So the 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 final plan, uh, the final um, results should be or could be showed at some event maybe there is a local festival maybe this is end of the year of school maybe there is other i don't know informal party or you know some milestone to to reach um the organizing needs systematic meetings so once for two weeks is like optimal it can be a little like once in in 10 days i would say uh, you should meet systematically in order to to keep track on who is doing what because what is also needed is division of tasks so everybody in your team has responsibility if the team is for between three and seven people i would say then really the work is really fun and these meetings are you know fruitful and but everybody still has their little tasks to do so it's somehow just. Um, gather in your team local leaders. That's my recommendation. So if you are like, if you have a friends or supporters among, um, I would say in my town, in Białowieża, if I would have to make local diagnosis, I would definitely go for the medical doctor who's a friend of mine, but she's a local leader definitely, and she knows a lot. Maybe you have around you some local leaders. It can be also local leaders out of youth. Remember that there are some brightening, rising up leaders among people whom you work with, right? It's not a mess. Mm, mix your team by age, gender, professions. Uh, remember during these meetings always to celebrate, to be happy and satisfied with the results which you already get on the way. And this is coordinator's job, my favorite. So between the meetings, like coordinator is responsible for the team to feel comfortable with each other. So keep the relations there also. And as I said, broad, it's important to have in your team of people who are doing the local diagnosis, a broad coalition. So get your partners on board. Please now, if you could think of and write in the chat who you think would you would like to invite to a cooperation. I know you don't know the subject yet of the diagnosis, but 
but it's about people with with or for whom you work so if you would like to know more about them who besides you and your organization could be there invited by you like wh what is you can put the name but it would be easier if you put also the function of this person like is it a doctor like in my case in this local village or some coordinator of other program also um, you can also think of who must be informed about your proceeding with local diagnosis it's not only who can help but also who you think could be an obstacle so it's better to tell them yeah i will be going through my town and asking people questions or i will be you know you should know maybe dear principal of the school that me with my youth with whom we know each other for last two years and we work we are going to make this huge event where we will ask some questions and cover information okay if you have any if you have any thoughts Fernanda, Fernanda writes that it could be a partner Fonti uh, adds that volunteers that participated in previous projects yeah definitely volunteers are the soul of our work I believe <laughs> and it could it could be a really great um, solution it could be a partner, Fernanda, you mean like a Mayor. life partner? Well, Mayor. It's, it's not well. precise. Okay, <laughs> <No>. sorry. <laughs> Corporate partner, yes. Sir. Uh, so, mayor, yeah, mayor is like important person or all the board of the, of the community, right? Um, think of also what could be the benefits for your partners, for mayor, for principal, for volunteers to proceed with diagnosis. Because you would probably, by inviting them, you would need to have arguments to get them on board. School students, I see now, thank you. And university students, yes. Of course, if we have relation to them, right? If they know what we are doing and they are willing to, to, to be part of it. And in the end, when you search for hmm, who are the partners who should know or who could help, remember who is there to ask them. For example, in my when I was providing the course for the mountaineering guides, we are uh, we were five directors. Uh, it's not so much about power, <laughs> uh, sharing power. It was about skills, like five of us was amazing team we were very different and there was many quarreling in inside but outside we were great because we had only one face to one partner i mean when there was somebody to talk officially with the director we sent somebody when there was somebody to you know to 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 go to talk to you i was the one to go so also think of who from your core team should to should talk to to possible partners. Okay, now let's go to choosing subject. So we will be working in teams, and just think of for now what are the topics of your activities in your organization? Is it sports, media, ecology? I I just put random just. Um, before going to the room, like think of how to precise what you do in one sentence or in one field. Um, and you will be checking in three or four people, depends how many people will be there in the rooms. I can see there are 21 of us, so I guess six rooms would be enough. Um, what knowledge you already have, what is the knowledge you miss about your youth, your people who you work with, if it's not youth, and what you would like to have a new perspective on. So which which perspective you are missing. Okay, and now, bye, pardon. And now I can, I showed you six subjects. By subject, I mean, because in general, our topic is youth. 
our youth or if somebody is not working with youth, just with people of different age but specific characteristic of these people but i wanted to narrow the subject so i have six proposals for you spaces in your town territory youngsters in your town in general what they are what they like how are they institutions working with youngsters in your surroundings relations in your town this means between many groups many people not only youth interests and free time and educational offer these are six subjects which i i wrote down i suggest you can also of course come up with your own but i hope it this is helpful so i am going to firstly prepare you to working in teams and only after i will say start go then you go okay <laughs> so we you will be working in three or four people groups in breakout rooms and you have their instructions so firstly please each of you could you introduce your work with you but very briefly just use that's why i asked you to use this one sentence what are what are the topics of your activities then after introduction please decide on one town territory which you will be working on commonly together so one person who is from this territory um, is come is becoming an expert i would say and two or three other people will be uh, like investigators so we'll be asking the questions and thinking about conceptualizing the diagnosis okay mm, proceed with questions then so there are three questions what knowledge you already have about your youth your people in this territory what is the knowledge you miss what you would like to have a new perspective on and then choose the specific subject of your diagnosis you have it on the right side one of six or bring your own just to narrow it and in the end rename your jamboard which i will send you and uh, with subject one of six town and names of particip participants so it would be easier uh, why i need the names of participants because i would like later on to share your gem boards to the forum and show it very briefly and ask you to to say as a few words it can be saying a few words in chat of course if you are shy i'm going to show to share with you all the same all the same gem board so there are uh, under after the arrows you can go to the right and you see task number 2 it's for later but then you have uh, three boards three four five six and so on and i would like to ask you to go to to first of all you will go to breakout rooms for 20 minutes you can all share this gem board and see task number one and you have 20 minutes for it so it's fine work in groups of three and four and you can put your notes in one of the boards you can click by the arrow okay hello hello i can see there are 12 of us already and does it mean that the the sessions are empty group number two and group number three group number two are you here please put on chat yes group number three are you here they are so talkative yes joanna is also here cool i understand that you are representatives of your groups so i will continue as you see in my presentation you should uh, so we will start with local diagnosis group two so you put uh, to an agenda educational offer is your subject in maribor because there is an assistant for roma children in every school but there is only one for every 50 children they are not enough the stigma for these people is very high so this is very interesting subject and must be really compelling to 
to have the diagnosis about this, what to expect to get from school and education, more knowledge about the language, please come. Uh, <laughs> the one about Roma culture and about the background they come from, such the resources and the level of education of their families, which risk to, to disadvantage them even more. Okay, so I understand that your subject is educational offer in Maribor. In context, how is it helpful to Roma children, right? Because the other subject is how Roma children are, like what they are ex expecting from the education, what they like, what, do, what they would like to learn and so on. But these are two other subjects. Okay, I got it. And I go through, we know, <laughs> I go to diagnosis group number three, Youth and sports in town of Arad, we know. Uh, maybe I need help from somebody from the group. Not small, not huge is the place. There aren't that many places to engage young people in this activity. Ah, in sports, I got it. Uh, stadiums have been converted to supermarkets. That's a pity. With enough people, municipality might give us the space. In the past, we collaborated with schools and teachers, but now there is no access to schools, just online teaching, of course. Some digital knowledge to find out topics that engage and what we could know more of. So what we are interested in is tech platforms, applications to find people to collaborate with, to have competitions and events and interactions. We are thinking on using social platforms such as TikTok and IG. Okay, great. So what you are going to really search for is educational offer, I would say, or sports and educational offer uh, through online. That's how I understand it. Yes, I think you got it. I was gonna jump in, but... Come, come, come. We, we Only pretty much see you, sorry. Yeah, we pretty much split it in what we know of what and what we could know more of. Like we were discussing different topics from what sports they play, where can you engage, uh, what, uh, who could you connect with or collaborate with to access this youth. And that's how we split the, the information. And we didn't go to the third one that was the new perspective on. It's but it, fine. It started to show that like new opportunities that might rise, and that's it. Yes, and I'm going to go farther. Sorry. Ah, my presentation again stuck. But I wanted to share with you. Yay! It's coming. Yes, you are, we are back. So I would like you to imagine you already have your subjects, like your area, where you, like what is the case? So uh, Arad or uh, Roma children in Maribor. Mm, and you have your case, you have the narrowed subject. And now just imagine that you bring your youngsters on board. which is very engaging for them also. Or even if you don't work with young people on your own, you can still bring some young minds and young perspectives. So I put here the task for the group, but we will not be doing it in a group anymore. I would like to have your answers on chat, okay? So I wanted to show you this. This is a map. Imagine that you have your first meeting for social diagnosis uh, and you invite young people to be your investigators. You can give them this kind of a map. It's, all, it's absolutely an example, right? But this kind of a map that they can go in to your town, to your territory and check. Check all the buildings, institutions and places which are interesting for them. Of course, I suggest that you would ask them for choosing their own favorites, not to send them everywhere. But if it was the case that they would like to go everywhere, please write down on the chat 
what kind of questions you could have in a shop, for example. So let's narrow the subject because we are not working in teams anymore. Let's narrow the subject to uh, to education, like, okay, how, for example, how Roma children are feeling in Maribor. Let's do this subject. So youngsters in our town, what about them? How are they feeling? What they do? What they do in their free time? Okay, so what are the narrowed specific questions which we could ask in in connection to, firstly, the shop. I'm waiting for your proposals on the chat. If we invite young people, like we have seven young people, they want to make social diagnosis with us, one of them is going to the shop, what he, she should ask. When you go to the shop, how do you get there? With whom? Great. I don't know, maybe it's also in your culture, but in my culture, you know, in mountain guides culture, the shop is like a big attraction. So people sit in front of the shop for half an hour and just drink lemonada. Any other? Okay, I will move on. You can still uh, catch up. Clap. Do you feel more comfortable in shop? Do you have any negative experience in shop? Oh, that's interesting. Maybe Stija, I don't understand, but I like the, the, the negative experience in a shop. Yeah, stigma. Okay, thank you. Uh, club, like local club. No worries, Nusha, thank you. Local club, what are the questions which we, we could ask, which young person could ask, in order to know a little more about the situation of Roma children in local club, let's say pub club. Are we supposed to come back here? Yes, come, come, please, Kian. Look at the presentation. I'm going through this, uh, through these places. Okay, and club is not very popular. Let's go club as in community club. Yes. How do you feel when you come to a club? Okay, I would add, what time is perfect for you to go there? Nusha is saying, can you get in a club? Yes, because some people can't. Yeah. How people look at you in a club? Yes. Okay, Deborah, that's fine. What about football field? Football field or any other sports field? What would be the questions for us to answer? to ask and for somebody to answer. Okay, it can be basketball field. Do you miss any services? Yeah. No, I mean, don't leave us. No, I'm kidding. Uh, like showers or lockers. Wow. I thought about, do you miss any games like that somebody could organize? For example, is it free? Is it accessible? Right. What about church, mosque, synagogue, whatever temple is there? Roma children, remember, in Maribor. How are they feeling there? To, to get to know them a little more. So if we are, for example, in front of church or mosque or anywhere, does it exist in the town? Yeah, first of all. Yeah, it, it, it's a hard question, right? Let's imagine that it's Christian church. So we have plenty of sources like people, par parish people who are going there, priest who is going there, observants, people who are not entering, but they are close to. Do you feel left out of activities? Yeah, how people look at you when you go there? I would also add some positive, like, what do you like about going to the church, for example, right? Or what is your favorite part of meeting there? Yeah, just to not stigmatize, just, just what you said. Are there a lot of young people? 
do you have a friend there? You know, so there are questions and questions, right? And in the end, I would ask you to, for example, health center. What about health center? In connection with health center, what would be the question? Do they have free Wi-Fi <laughs> in a church? <laughs> okay. Is there a spa in health center? Yeah. Is your doctor nice? How often you go to doctor? Do you know your doctor by name? I was moving on the health center. Yeah, yeah. Is there a spa? Is there a doctor nice? Um, how does she, he treat you? How long do you have to wait in a queue? How do you arrange the meeting at doctors? Do you need to call? Do you need to show your face? Have you ever had good experience with doctor, bad experience with the doctor? Can you communicate with the doctor? Right. Okay. Thank you so much. I, I, I believe that you already see how many questions there are. And when we put one question, there are three more to come because of it. So just to move on, okay, that's, that's what I was just showing you, subjects and questions. So I would like to ask you where else we can find the answers besides those places which are on the map and which I put here, shop, club, football, church, library, cultural center, and so on. So where else we can find our answers to our questions? There is a little tip. Who can reply to the questions? So we can search also for figures, people, functions, the people who work there. Yeah, definitely. So in the church, it will be priest or nun. In school, it would be director, principal, teacher, right? At the shop, it would be shopkeeper, a uh, person who is coming with, from magazine with stuff. Other researchers, yes, other researchers. So what we can do in order for us to get to know, for example, Roma children in our town better, it's also to check what other researchers already found out. Yeah. And what by other researchers, we don't mean only academia reports, right? Because it's not so easy to get to them. It's not, I would say, the material of first need. The other research could be also some municipality documents, right? I'm going to the next slide for you to show that we have some formal resources also we can go to. So it's official data about population, unemployment, investments. All these data should be available at your municipality, maybe if not website, then at least at the place itself. But there are also many communities and many countries have the requirement for the local communities to have strategic documents, which are speaking a lot about development plan or, or reporting the previous researchers on some topics. So it's, it's a matter of digging in. And in the end, um, you can search for, and it's individual task for you, your homework, uh, you can search for um, maybe in your country, there are official data governed by somebody on website, on the platform. So I got the, this is an example from Poland, Moja Polis, so my Polis, my town, um, is, is the place where all this information, bureaucratic information, which are hard to get through websites of municipalities, they are brought together by many people, not only official data, but also the, the, the results of research. So individual task for you is find out, think of, check with some friends of yours, Maybe somebody heard of this kind of platform at your country. If you already know it, please share it on the chat because it's super interesting where to get the, inf the local information from. Okay, 
and subject, blah, 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 blah. sorry. Okay, I would like just to go briefly to the tools. Of course, as you probably heard me already talking, it's a key individual chat. So if we have our youngsters investigators, we can ask them to go and to chat with the doctor, with the church priest, with the magazineer, with the shopkeeper. There is also a group chat, so we can gather people together on a tea, coffee, or in any other place, which is not, which is usual, occasional, popular. We can go to cafeteria, or we can go in front of the shop. So there, where people already gather, join them, and then ask questions. Of course, we I have. See. So yes? you you wanted to 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 talk about the. Offline tools, nothing fancy, I see. <laughs> but there are also online tools. You have every tool you need. It's just important that before you ask questions, you will tell people why you need them. Okay, I'm Hania Nowitzka. I'm a local, I'm a local, um, a member of local association here, and I'm interested in this and that. That's why we actually proceed with local diagnosis. We have some questions to ask. Would you like to answer me these questions, right? This, this introduction is very important because it's, it, it gives credibility to us. The other thing is observing. So you can be like a Sherlock Holmes or like, uh, like any other creature who is just sitting there with notes and like sitting for three hours on the main square and looking who is actually between 12 and 3 p.m. going to the square, who is using it, what is this space for, if it's the, if the subject is space, for example, or interests of youngsters, if they are there. Of course, they are not there, at least in my town. Um, you can walk with video camera and have documentation of the places or of the events. You can also have the animation action, which means that you can make an event and or you can make people do something, perform something and check how they feel with it and check what they do, what, what, they, um, what they talk about during it. And last but not least, it's my favorite, questions hanging on the rope. So when there is already an event, for example, festin, festival, something which is in public sphere, you can be there as an animator, you can put the rope, like for laundry, be between two, two sticks or two, two trees, and ask people, give, give you, be able to give people paper and pen, and just say to them, yeah, we do this little survey chat. Uh, we have one question, for example, what do you like the most about our town? If you want, join, just write one sentence or one word and put it there and hang it. It's nice because people can react to it. Uh, one, one only comment about chat, chatting. You can use use open questions, where, what, how, when, how many, how often, how far. Please avoid asking why. Why? Because it's quite blocking. If people are asked why, it means that they have to um, translate themselves. Like um, it's, a, it's a little attack hidden in there, or it can be perceived like this. So just admit. <laughs> you see, now I must give more energy in order to tell you what I thought, what was my opinion. So just if you want to have this, you know, people happy and diagnose, led through nicely, don't ask why. Why is actually the part of your own conclusions which are coming uh after you get all the materials and now what is really important it's again teamwork so your task as a team is to search for links between facts putting facts in order and questioning some stereotypes be careful because everybody lies it's totally normal people 
are afraid of judgment or of consequences. For example, if you ask people in front of library, do you always give back your books on time? Who would say yes if it's not true? Who would say no if it's not true? So uh, be careful, be like, be mindful that your answers can't be taken like one to one in hundred percent. You have to judge it also. So the uh, the, the conclusion uh, stage is you know starts with gathering all the material meeting together to have this brainstorm and, and good flow of work and many perspectives. And from these many perspectives, you can see, you can spot together differences and similarities in many materials you have in, in, the, uh, in notes from the chats, in your drawings from observations, in the, in the films you, uh, you screened, you, um, you produced, and in the from the papers you hang on the rope laundry rope so all of these materials should should go to the room to the floor or to the table you start covering covering it putting in order spotifying differences and similarities and in the end you will try to describe the general picture the last thing the fourth stage of diagnosis is the presentation as you remember in the end in the very beginning i said it's really important to present what you found out and it usually has the form of written report please see there is introduction from important parts who you are why you made the diagnosis what was the idea from coming from goals of your diagnosis methods what exactly were you doing and report the most interesting, the most surprising results. Don't put there everything. Put what was the most surprising and interesting. Okay. With your presentation in the end, if, when you have it already in your hands, written, you can ask yourself who also should get familiar with your diagnosis and how to get to them. Maybe there should be an exhibition from what you have created maybe some media would be interested in it. Think of it. Thank you so much.